In 1977, Atari revolutionized home entertainment by releasing the Atari VCS. Never before had a home video game console been so successful as to become a household name. The Atari VCS was a very, very limited computer. It had 128 bytes of memory. You know, that's really, really nothing and everything had to be computed on the fly, and it was difficult to program, but it was highly flexible. Before then, you had things like the Magnavox Odyssey and Fairchild Channel F and some uh, more obscure game systems, I think, and those were pretty much driven by a handful of, of games. When we designed it, we felt that it could maybe do 16 to 8 to 20 games. You know, the things that we could figure out. And of course, it did hundreds and hundreds. Pitfall from Activision, an original. Uh, jumping over the little ponds and jumping on the alligators' heads. That was always a lot of fun. Obviously, combat is a really big one. It had dozens of different game modes. So you could be like, let's play with tanks wandering through this maze and bullets will ricochet off the walls. The ability to play against another person um, really was what made that game something special. I loved Home Run, I loved uh, boxing. Loved Missile Command, that was super, super fun. Defender was pretty cool. Because it was aliens getting people, right? So the aliens get the people and you gotta blow them away and save those people before they fall back down. The game was awesome! And then there's other really weird random stuff, like the Smurfs game. Like, yeah, it's, it sounds stupid, Smurfs, whatever, but that game was awesome. There were some really weird licensed games that someone decided, you know what? this would make a great video game. I have to call out E.T., I think everybody would. I think I figured out really quick that E.T. was crap. Started it up as little E.T., and I push a button and his head goes up and down, and I'm like, hey, this is pretty cool. I walk two steps and I fall into a hole. I know what the hell is going on, and I kept falling into the holes. And I'm in a hole! What am I supposed to do here? I got E.T., like me and E.T., like I understood how that game worked. And like, it's like, you gotta go find the pieces and then, you know, I couldn't get out of the hole. I remember that game not being particularly good, sort of, but whatever, a lot of those games sucked. A flood of bad games combined with a failure of a couple high profile titles like E.T. contributed to the video games market crash in 1983. But there was more than just a flood of bad games, as the market was also getting saturated with different consoles, many of which came from Atari designs. At the time, very few places made the chips needed to run a video game console, and Atari was working with all of them. One of the best ways to keep from having competition was all of them wanted our business. And so I said, okay, we will fund the development of the next generation chip. I did that with all of them. Well, after I left, Ray Kassar came in and said, Bushnell was a really, you know, what a stupid guy. We don't need all these other chips. And so he basically canceled all the contracts. One of them went to TI, one of them went to Coleco, one of them went to Bally, and so he created his own competition. Though it played a big part in the market crash, the Atari was still the starting point for a lot of the games industry. Companies like Activision were formed out of ex-Atari employees, its initial success created a market for home video games, and for a lot of people in the games industry, it was the first console they ever played. It brought video games home. That's, I mean, that's what the legacy of the 2600 was. Turning that system on and playing it for the first time, I think, is my fondest memory, because it's how I got my start in gaming. and. You know, I remember playing Pong and I remember playing Pitfall. And playing that game was kind of like just a whole thing I just had never thought was really possible. It started a lifelong love of video games for me. Um, and for probably a lot of people my age as well. Whatever your first piece of hardware was, you're always going to have a soft spot for. Because it introduced you to this whole other world. And the 2600 did that, but on a much bigger scale because it, it got everybody thinking. You know, not just as, as game players and as creative people, but as business people too. And that brings us where we are now.